Welcome everyone to today's session on functional programming by Narmada and Samina. Without further delay, over to you, Narmada and Samina. Thank you, Trisha. Uh, hello all, hope you all are having a nice time at the conference. So today we're gonna do a workshop on functional programming and test automation. So we'll give you a GitHub link. You can maybe clone the repo and you can look into the code and you can also practice it along with this. Before we get started, a quick introduction about ourselves. So I'm Narmada. I have around uh, six years of experience in testing. I've worked on various domains. I've done manual testing, automation, and I've also worked on uh, various tools and technologies. I've worked in web, web testing, mobile testing, API. And currently, we've been, I've been working on uh, functional programming for the past one year. And however, we kind of used it in our project or in our work. We just wanted to share it with everybody, how it's useful and things like that. So if you want to reach out to me after the session, please feel free to contact me on my uh, LinkedIn or uh, my personal email. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Myself, Samina. I have an experience of nine years and I'm currently working as a senior consultant in ThoughtWorks. I have experience in front end and the back end automation. So currently I'm working on one of the retail domain where I got exposure to the functional programming where the idea of uh, doing the workshop came from. So if you want to uh, get in touch with me, you can uh, connect me on LinkedIn or my Gmail ID. So let's get started. Uh, to set the context, this functional programming workshop uh, will be like, uh, you'll be learning the concepts uh, which makes you to understand how the functional programming works. And then we will be looking into one of the code and where we have a kind of non-functional way of writing it and then applying those concepts to the code, existing code and making it refactoring to the functional way of it. So you'll be learning concepts and applying to it to refactor, okay? so. Let's get started. Uh, to get started with, what is a functional program? So if you look at any software which is developed in uh, functional programming, how it looks like, how different it is. Functional programming is not a something like it's a programming language altogether. It is a style how a developer will develop. It's like, uh, mm, like how you will use your code to have more functions. If you look at any code base which is used as a functional programming style, you will see most of the functions as uh, smaller chunks of code which will be more clear. And uh, you'll be seeing only two lines or three lines of code within each function. Okay. We will call it as pure functions. What is the meaning of pure functions? Pure functions are the small chunks of code where you'll not see any side effects with it. So it will take the input, it will give you the output. The main motto of crux of functional programming is to have these kind of functions where you will not have any side effects, meaning you'll not be changing anything, any state of any variable, or any hard drives or uh, emails, all this stuff, you have to uh, make sure like it is removed from those pure functions. So functional programming is basically coding in a such a way where you'll be using more pure functions extensively throughout your code. Okay. So in functional programming, we'll call uh, functions as a first class citizens, but why, right? So if you look at uh, a difference between imperative way and the functional way, in functional way, you will treat functions as if like a variables, like how we'll call variables, how we'll return variables, how we'll take arguments as variables. Okay, the similar way, we will be using functions as variables. So that's why function uh, first class citizens in functional programming are the functions. Okay, so I'll show you how we can define functions as a variables, functions as a arguments and functions as a return types. Before that, uh, you people have done the setup like anybody wants some time to do it. So right now I'm gonna uh, switch to my node shell to execute few commands and just to brush you up how the functions look like in the JavaScript. In this uh, full workshop, we're gonna use JavaScript as a base language. So we need the, the Node.js. So if you look at the repo uh, we have given in the chat, you can look at uh, Node.js to be installed. Okay, so in functional programming, we are saying functions as first class citizens, like uh, we are saying like functions more or less we're gonna use as the variables. So before going into looking into that, let's uh, brush up some uh, JavaScript functions, how we'll be using uh, throughout our workshop, we'll be using uh, 
arrow functions and anonymous functions we'll be using normal functions all this stuff so to just to uh, give you the uh, brush up around basics of javascript right so a normal function how it looks like is like a function keyword and sample add and let's say let's take n1 comma n2 and uh, i'll be having a uh, return type for it n1 plus n2 let's say so this is a normal function if i want to call this function i'm going to do going to pass my parameters so this is how the normal functions will be in the javascript the basics and uh, and then we have one more uh, level of uh, uh, kind of functions where we'll say we'll not give any function names for it we'll call it as anonymous functions and it looks something of that sort which you have a function keyword for it and you will be having your parameters for it and it will be returning for you let's say some again so this is just to brush you up on javascript uh, syntax is what we will be using most uh, frequently in our report base so so this is an again anonymous function in anonymous function and the normal functions what is the difference you are just not giving any uh, function names you just use the function keyword and then you pass your parameters now how can i get executed just pass your uh, parameters whatever you want so this is one of the way of defining your functions the other way is like arrow functions so arrow functions you not see any keywords like a function keyword and you just have uh, if it is single liner no need of uh, uh, opening braces and closing braces you just uh, return also implicitly given for you if it is arrow function i mean if you have multiple lines of code just start uh, uh, coding like having your code inside your uh, braces okay so this one i can say n1 plus n2 and uh, this is an anonymous function uh, arrow function where i don't have any function keyword i'm just passing my uh, parameters it becomes a function for me and then your body of your function okay how can i call this just pass your parameters okay one comma two so these are the three things which we will be uh, most frequently using in our code base one is the normal functions and the arrow functions and then anonymous functions and now we are saying in functional programming we can call a function we can assign a function to a variable we can call we can pass a function to an argument we can return as a function as a uh, return type right how is it possible let's say i have uh, one function which says add it say one comma num2 is my normal function i'm gonna write return and plus num2 and uh, here you going to see the basic examples of it and how we can implement in the code uh, we will see while refactoring the benefits of these things okay so we have defined a uh, function which is add function takes two parameters and returns some of it so if i call a method pass in it now this is my variable which is holding my function so if i want to execute that one just pass so this is my constant now i'm using my constant to call my function this is how we'll define a variable to a function okay so next we have void uh, functions as a arguments we need to uh, see how we can pass functions as a argument to the other function let's say i have a function called function at multiply so we are saying this one should take a function so i'm going to say it will take two parameters one num2 and then function and i want the definition for this one should be i want to apply my function on these parameters whatever i'm getting as input and uh, let me hold that into a variable my constant i'm just keeping it as output and then i want to multiply by 2 right on output divided by multiply by 2 then i close the file okay now i am uh, in this function i am passing a function as an argument now how to call this function right let's say i'm going to have a constant 
I'm gonna do multiply. I'm gonna what parameters are taking? Just taking input one, input two. I need to provide some function. So here I have defined my function, right? So I'm gonna pass it as my function. I just pass my function, which I have created on top, which is nothing but my add function. Inside my function, which is taking that function as an argument, it is executing that function using your input parameters. And then we are returning some operation on it. And then we are returning the output. That is what exactly I did. I just created my variable. I called my function with it. And then this uh, function, what we created before, we are just passing it. And it is getting executed, which is passed as an argument, getting executed inside your add multiply function. Okay, Is it clear now? So now uh, we have seen uh, uh, two things, which is like how we can use a variable, uh, how we assign a function to a variable. And we have seen how we can pass a function as an argument. Now we have to see how we can return a function from a function. Okay. So for that, I'm going to create one more function. Let's say add division. This one, I'm going to say one comma num two add it and then divide. Uh, so the definition for this will be, I wanted to return a function. So just a return function add def and uh, it will take what it will do. It will return me the output constant output, output equal to my num1 plus num2, then divided by 2. Return output divided by 2. OK, in this function, what we have done, we have created an add, add division function. It is taking two parameters. But if you look at the implementation of it, I am returning a full function. So my definition of this function says, take the parameters, sum it up, and then divide. So I'm calling this function inside my function and then returning it. Okay, now I'm gonna create one variable for my reference. I'm gonna add division, add dev of, it needs two parameters. Let's say comma five. It says uh, it is returning me a function. Add it. Mm. What did I do? We, we are, it's returning me a function. Uh, let's say add division of three comma four. Add division. I do so here I just define a function which is taking the num1 comma num2 and it is returning a function which is uh, uh, performing an action okay let me redefine that function to pass the parameters Add to go. Add division. Yeah, two off. Right. Ten comma five. Okay. 
Hmm. If this is correct, then right? Yeah, I'm calling my function. It is written in your function. That uh, that function in turn should return me the output for it. Everything. Did you see anything I'm missing over here? Uh, sorry. Let me check. Uh, so you're doing addition of num one comma two. Uh, mm -hmm. Return function of add div of one comma two. And that is that is uh, returning output by two, right? Correct. Correct. So your add division is going to give you a function. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To that function, you need to pass two parameters. So can you store this to a constant and then yeah? Can you pass it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But we tried uh, by passing without passing the parameters also. Let's try that also. Okay. So you're returning a function, right? So you first store it in a mm -hmm. variable. You take the return. You... Correct, 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 correct. Let me see without passing. I have a global variables declared over there. So now I have uh, this one const uh, add d equal to add division of 10 comma 10. Okay, now this defining this. Now let's see add d. Yeah. Previously, it didn't work, right? Did I mention? Okay, fine. So to give you a summary recap, so what I have done here, I have a function which takes two parameters and this function returns a one more function. Inside that function, what we're gonna do, uh, just taking uh, some of these things and returning as this one. So to call that function, I just uh, created a constant where I pass my parameters to it. And then I'm uh, to execute that function. I just call the inner function all as well. So it is like that. Uh, uh, one, uh, one more way is to call is like, let's say D1, you have add division of pi comma five and uh, const of add two equal to add D1. Add the uh, three of add the add three of add this function. Okay. Yeah. So basically, this is how we'll return a function to execute on top of your uh, whatever function is getting called. So this add division, which is taking two parameters. In turn, we are returning one more function, which execute uh, those uh, two parameters and uh, return the output divided by two. And how we call? Take a constant, call add division, then call your add constant, and it will go and execute the inside function. OK, is it clear? Hello? Yeah, yeah fine. OK, so can I clear it off? or? Any doubts? Okay. Okay. So we have seen how to pass a functions as a variable and functions as an argument and functions as a return time right? So next, what we can, uh, if you want to familiarize with the function programming, we have to know the impure and pure functions. What does it mean? What does it mean a pure function and impure function, right? Pure function is such functions where you will see uh, any, uh, where you don't see any side effects. If for a given input, it will generate your output. It will not do anything else other than that. It doesn't depend on the time when you're calling it, what is happening with that. So, so if you call multiple times, it will yield you the same output that is called pure functions, okay? What is impure functions? Impure functions are something like, uh, let's say, uh, getting a system time, okay? If you want to get a system time, uh, if you call this now, it will be different time. And if you call after one hour, it will be a different time. Or uh, sending an email. Sending an email, again, it is an impure function, which will yield you different kinds of outputs uh, uh, with respect to time. Okay, So we have to make sure like the pure functions will be more in the functional programming, where you will not see any side effects, and where it will yield you the same output for the given input. That is called pure functions. Okay. 
Now let's move on. Uh, let's say we have uh, 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 in the setup. If you see, we have given a juice shop. We have taken juice shop as a sample app. So in that uh, juice shop, uh, if you see, you can see some products over there. We'll uh, do the application tour as well. Business requirement is like in that uh, uh, juice shop. We have items added to it, and now we wanted to start. Development is done. Now we wanted to start automating different flows for the same app. So. Uh, so to do that, and uh, if you see your uh, thinking, right, if you are coming from object oriented programming to the function programming, it is very difficult to understand in the code, everything will be, you will be seeing it as a functions function. So it is like, if you want to get started from the scratch, you have to think like a functional programming and there are few techniques which will help you to do that. Okay. So those techniques are like first identify your actions. And then identify your calculations and data and the users for it. Okay. What is actions? Which depends on time. If you call this time, it will lead you some other output. If you call other time, you will create other output. So we don't want to have that kind of uh, uh, actions to be merged with the calculations. Okay. So to uh, do that, what we can uh, think of, like how we can segregate, like actions will keep it as separate things and calculations will keep it as separate things so that it will be very minimal changes goes into the calculations. And always you will be concentrating on the actions. So in actions, I can give you an example of like, let's say you have a distributor system and uh, where uh, you have uh, something you wanted to once, system is done some uh, some operations are done you want to send something like email so if you are sending email at this time and if you send it again we have ambiguity right whether the previous email went off or this is if i trigger now it is for the second time generating or what happened to that one uh, where we have the ambiguity of with the past events what happened in future what is going to happen Okay, for any requirement, if you're gonna uh, start with the functional programming, you uh, categorize your functionalities in these sections. Actions which will have ambiguity or it's gonna have side effects, you make those under actions, okay? And then comes the calculations. Calculations are the one where you'll have uh, very minimal uh, changes. And since uh, uh, for given input, it will be always the same output, what we have seen as a pure functions. Those things we have to segregate between the actions and the calculations. And then we have data for any application. We need to have the data, right? So keep the data as separate. Don't include in your impure functions or pure functions and uh, uh, data should be immutable. Most of the functional programming, uh, what it does is like, uh, it will copy your uh, data, what you wanna perform actions on and start using it after copying. It's not like directly you start uh, global variables, whatever you have start uh, manipulating that and uh, start doing operations on it. No, we should not do that. We always should do duplicate or copy of your object and then start using it. If it is not possible, uh, in some cases, if, uh, if it is uh, too difficult to do that, then uh, we can put it under impure functions, but maximum you categorize this way, actions, calculations, and the data. So if you put any software development or test code in this manner, it will be easier for you where to have the functions as a pure, where to have the functions as a impure. So now uh, in our uh, full workshop, we're gonna have a juice shop as a, our application, uh, a sample application. And I'll just uh, walk you through how it looks like. And if you look at the readme, we have given how to get that in your locals. Uh, for that one, you need to have the Docker installed and uh, you can follow that. Uh, should I uh, give some time to do a setup for the juice shop? Or you people already have your... Remember this, shall we give... Uh... Mm, some time for that. I think they would have done it parallelly, Samina. You can go ahead. Okay, fine, fine. So this is my app where I have up and running in my local. And uh, if you look at this, what we have, we have a juice shop, like a user login we have. We can register a user and log in with that user. And if you see here, we have different kinds of juices. Along with the juices, we have a few other uh, items as well where user can 
let me log in with my registered user. I already have my registered user with me. Now in the test code as well, it is provided. You wanna use it. You have to register your user and then start using it for your login. Then you can see add to basket options. Let's see how it looks like. So now you can see we have, uh, this is sample where you have uh, Apple juices and along with the juices, you have multiple items in it. So you can go ahead and log in and uh, add to the basket. And then you can see in your basket and do a checkout. And when you're uh, doing checkout, you can select your address, whichever is already saved for us. Like we have done the setup for us. So for the first time login, if you're doing, you have to create your own uh, deliveries, uh, your address and all. Here, I'm gonna select the delivery speed and then uh, you have to select your delivery speed depending on your total card price will change whether you are uh, uh, one day delivery or fast delivery. And then we have our uh, payment options. Okay, Payment options is again, pre-saved uh, card details. You can save it or at runtime, if you wanna uh, create your new card, you can create it. I, right now I have a pre-saved data. So I'm just selecting it. And then once you see your code is added and you can see depending on your delivery speed, your uh, items are added and I can check out. This is the full uh, flow what we can see in this uh, juice shop, okay? This is how the juice shop is. Now uh, let's look at a business case, okay? We got our app uh, developed fully and now we wanted to uh, test the this flow what we have seen like uh, adding the card, uh, adding the product and ordering it out. So what, what is my business use case? It says like uh, your juice shop, you, when your user logs in, they have to see that cart empty and then start using their own items, uh, add to the cart, then uh, check out successfully. User should be able to check out. So the user journey for this business use case will be uh, what uh, the application tool, whatever seen, it is it will be typical of that. So it first user logs in with the registered user and get all the items of your juice shop portal. And we are saying like, uh, we wanted a workflow where we gonna add only the juices to the cart and then go to your cart, check out the items. When, while check it, checking it out, you have to select your delivery address and then delivery speed payment method, and then uh, just uh, validate your uh, cart price and check out. Validate for your successful message. Your uh, uh, order is placed successfully. That, that message we can validate. This is a user journey for our test case, what we gonna, do a uh, code walkthrough and refactoring over it. Okay, now if you look at uh, code walkthrough, now the user journey, whatever we have seen, we gonna code it in the non FP way, like how we will use it normally using uh, loops and all, right? Let's look into that code, how it looks like. So we have a function, uh, we have a test case where we have to add only favorite juices into it and check out for it, right? So for yeah. that one, well, what is- you, Can you use the other test, test underscore normal? So uh, if you check out your uh, Git repo, right? We already checked in the code for you. And uh, this is a non-FP way of doing it, okay? The first one we'll see how we're gonna automate without uh, uh, without uh, without applying the FP concepts for it. So in this, if you see, first we have our, uh, uh, we're gonna use Selenium for it. So Selenium 4 we have used and uh, JavaScript for it, right? So again, we have created our driver and all. And here, what we're gonna do, first launch your application and then log in. And then we have get all items, meaning it is not differentiated between uh, the use case is we have to get our uh, mm, products, which are juices, right? So this one is giving me all items on the landing page, whatever I have. So in this case, what we have uh, done here, we have taken a list, which is, which is a list for me, which is all products in my homepage. And then I'm iterating over it. I'm getting the text. So my text looks like, how it looks like it is having a apple juice and the price of it and then add to basket with my list it is giving me juice also and the price also and the add to basket option also okay so this text whatever is holding for me is having a couple of things so i'm iterating over my full list of items i'm getting my price and the name of the product okay so here I'm iterating through, throughout my list. And if the list is having, uh, if you look at the application, right? Some items has a sold out option, right? So in this case, you will be seeing four options, like sold out as different option and the name and the price and the add to basket options. Once you get the text of your all products. 
So for this that case, we have if else. If it is a product is uh, three items only, if you are getting a text of uh, three length of three, then you will be pushing it to the new uh, map, which will be a, a new object for you, where you are creating your name and price depending on that. And then we have other one where you have the sold out option. You just take uh, your price and name according to your index and whatever you are getting from the text. We are iterating over full list, right? We have for loops applied for loops. This is how we normally code in the uh, non FP way, and we look after that how we gonna refactor this. The output of this method, what we have is get all items, will be an object which will array of object which will give me the price and the name of the juice. And next, we have launched our application, and then we have. Uh, get all items and then get juice items. Our user journey says we wanted to uh, shop for juice items. So this method is getting me among all the items, get me juice items. How we are getting in this? Here we got full list and then we got the string. And depending on that uh, string, either it is juice only or the hype. Uh, this is juice items, we are getting it. So we have applied uh, right now in this test case, we are taking only juice only items. We applied one condition. If it is matching only juice only, then you go get my juice among all products. Get me the juice item. So the criteria will be again, you got your full products and then you're going to iterate throughout your list. And if you get the text name of the product and if your product is having ML, then you push it to your new new list, which is having again uh, juice only items in it. This is iteration. Again, we are doing on the our all items list. Now, next process, what we have, we got our all, all uh, juice type items. And next, we are going for add juices to the cart. So in add juices to the cart, uh, we going to have the favorite juices over here. And we're going to iterate over all the juice items. And then we have uh, normal find the element add to the basket just click on that and uh, it will be added to your basket again we are iterating through our favorite juices whatever we shortlisted from the all items then we have navigate to the cart this is a direct operation which we will go to the uh, to check out we need to navigate to the cart and this is a navigate to the cart and then we have checkout cart it is again a normal function we don't uh, we don't have any iterations over here so just uh, do a checkout with the added items and then uh, once you uh, go do the checkout, we need to select the address and we have seen that flow. In the address, if you have already saved your address detail, we are just selecting that address over here. Okay, now we have select delivery. Again, at this select delivery, we have multiple options. So in this method, if you see, I'm getting the delivery type and the uh, driver instance of it. In the delivery type, we have standard, if you look at my delivery type, I'm going to select my address still here. We have seen like how we're going to work on. So if you see here, it is having three uh, types, right? The day one day delivery, fast delivery, standard delivery. So depending on that delivery type, I'm going to select one of the options. And we are passing like a delivery type of one, which is again an array for us. We are uh, hard coding it. And if it is standard delivery, go on, click on that item. So this select, uh, select delivery will give you that option. Then we have select card and continue. We have already saved one of the card. So we're going to select that card and continue for it. And then we have our assertions like uh, once you are uh, into the card level, you have to you selected uh, delivery speed will impact your total card price with all the favorite juices, whatever you had it. It will be some of all those things. So uh, just uh, verify how your expected total price is coming, actual uh, total price. And then we have assertions around uh, uh, total item charges displayed and then actual item uh, item charges get bonus points. There is one more uh, option like uh, where you can get a bonus point in the sense, uh, let's say, let's say I have a rule where it says like, my, uh, see for this item, I don't have any bonus point because, because my limit, some limit is there, which is not meeting. So in this case, it is not, but it should be a zero that is a validation for us. Now place your order and pay. Once you click on place your order, it is again just a click function. Once you uh, click on your place your order and pay, then you'll get a confirmation message saying your order has been placed successfully. And then we have a session uh, saying that message we display once a user successfully uh, do the checkout. 
then uh, we have normal flows and uh, driver to close and quit this is the normal flow how we'll be seeing it in our uh, non fp way right it is a normal flow either if you want to do it in java or uh, any any programming language this is how we'll do it uh, so how to if you do the ma method mapping whatever we have seen for our user journey it will give you this kind of uh, launch application we have launch application and then we have login get all items we got the juice type items then add juices to the cart and navigate to the cart check out to the cart select address select delivery pay and continue on the assertions and the order confirmation this is how we have method mapping right now without uh, with with a non fp way of coding so now looks like uh, we have the normal flow functioning now with this test case whatever we have automated now we are getting more data and more business flows for it we wanted to make sure like our existing automated test cases are scalable for the what functional uh, like a new business cases whatever we are getting in so for that one we need to refactor like how we going to do how we going to handle for the more data right so to understand the refactoring of uh, non fp way to the fp way we need to understand few more uh, concepts of uh, fp which is uh, higher order one of the major concepts is higher order functions what does it mean like high, what is a higher order function higher order functions are like uh, which takes as we have seen which takes the input as a uh, function as a argument or a function which returns function as a argument uh, return type is a function a function which takes a function as an argument or a function which is returning a function is called higher order functions so in javascript we have a uh, uh, couple of uh, inbuilt uh, higher order functions for us which is nothing but uh, we'll call it as a map filter and reduce in map uh, all these operations are on a list in the sense we going to do it on the uh, list of items so in map what it takes it takes an input as your list and it will return you the same length of list so uh, let's say take an example of uh, Uh, I have an input array. Let's say I have a function. Okay, I have a function which says increment an input. Okay, uh, I'm saying uh, return it as a input plus one. Okay, so this is my function, and let's say I have an input array where I'll be having the Two, three, four, six, seven. I have my uh, input array. Now, what I'm gonna do, as I said, uh, we're gonna see the map. What map does? It will iterate throughout your input array and apply the function whatever you are passing to it on each element. So now, I'm gonna call my map on my input array. what i'm saying i want my input array each element to be incremented by 1 okay for this one i have to provide my function i'm saying increment okay so what happens here if you look at this i just uh, uh, created my function increment and then i have applied my map higher order function meaning it is taking one more uh, function as a input argument right so this is how we are that is why we are calling map as a higher order functions so if you look at this what it has done it has taken each element and it has applied the function whatever we have written over here so it has taken the first one and it is incremented to two and it is uh, done for all the elements for us so in normal way how we'll do it we'll iterate with the for loop and we'll take each element and uh, increment it or put it in your new array wherever you want to send it back so the similar way here we have inbuilt uh, map functions which will take the uh your uh, other uh, user defined functions uh, if you want to do it and whatever is a uh, implementation for it it will apply for each element of your array so let's say if i want to write it as a uh, arrow functions just a uh, similar way you can write it it is like take an element and that as i said map will iterate throughout your uh, array each time it will take one element right so i want to increment that element This is how you will do within the uh, as a arrow function. This is like normal function, and you can use it this way also. Okay, this is other syntax for it. Just to be uh, clear on the syntax is what we're gonna use in the refactoring. This will help you. Okay, then we have uh, filter function. What does the filter function does? 
filter also again a function which we gonna uh, apply on a list so the this filter is like uh, by the uh, terminology itself it says uh, like it gonna filter some few things in your uh, input array whatever list you gonna give it will filter some items in it and it will return you back so how to do that okay so let's say i have a function i have my input array as a one two three four five okay function which uh, gives me in the array of elements which are even numbers okay even numbers and uh, i need a input for it i'm just gonna write as uh, return if uh, my input i'm saying even number right so equal to equal to zero then you return me the input so this is my function which i'm gonna apply using the uh, filter now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna call my filter function input array on top of my input array i'm gonna use filter function where uh, i need to pass my function to it right so my function name is even now see it has applied this logic of your function for each element and then it made you the other list out of it which is your input array is having all these elements and then it made cut short of three elements which the size of the list has been changed with the filter function as we are filtering on it so next we have one more function which is reduce function so by the terminology itself it says uh, if you want to uh, shrink your list of elements let's say you have right now we have seen 1 2 3 4 5 6 right so you want to uh, do a sum of it okay so reduce function will take one callback function and you can uh, uh, it will take the initial value as zero so let's say i'm um, going to write my function which i'm going to pass to my reduce function let's say summation uh in this it will take a two parameters right input 1 comma input 2 in this uh, i'm going to say a return some of my input one and input two. okay so okay this is my summation one of the uh, method what uh, we have already now we want to apply this on using reduce how are we going to do we have our input array dot reduce as i said it will take your uh, uh, it will take two elements in the sense accumulator and the current uh, value in the sense if you are taking this uh, array what it does initial value first first value it will take it as 1 and the initial value take take it as 0 this function i am saying to sum it up all the values i want it to be summed up so it will pass to this function if you are applying input array and reduce on it first it will take the first element whatever you have in your input array and it will by default the accumulator will be sending it as a 1 okay so uh, uh, accumulator will be zero for it initially the element what you have is 1 and accumulator will be zero it will be 1 plus 0 so it gonna put it in the uh, normal empty array for you and then it will take the next value 2 and it will go and add to the 1 then it will become 3 and now it will take uh, this 3 and it will go and add to the 3 this is how we uh, the reduce will work so it is like you are putting the Uh, you are creating an object which will be taking the initial value and the element of it so now i'm going to call my summation and by default it will take the like how we in the normal coding we will write right count equal to count plus 1 and count will initialize to 0 then start adding the other elements to it or well, that's how we'll do it now so the similar way here by default it is taking it as 0 let's say i have done summation on it so it has summed up everything whatever we have in our input array okay so uh, i wanted to say like uh, uh, instead of zero initialize with 5 okay so what has what it has done it has taken 5 as a initialized value then it has taken the first element and it has added 5 plus 1 and 6 and then uh, again 6 plus 2 it has added and then it continues the chain so this is how the reduce will work to give you one object out of your uh, list of elements these things we are calling it as a higher order functions which will be using uh, uh, regressively in your uh, functional uh, functional programming uh, refactoring of our code 
so uh, now we have we have an idea about a few functional concepts like how we are calling the functions as syntax and how what we going to use it and we learn few concepts like uh, in functional programming we more are around using functions as a variables as an arguments returning types and uh, assigning to their variable now uh, we learned about uh, higher order functions as well now let's go uh, look into the code which is existing for us how we can refactor you applying these concepts yeah um let me share yeah so i hope everyone's able to see my screen and i hope the font is fine right okay yeah. so we already went through this code uh, we samina gave everyone a walk through of how we normally write uh, just a test case flow right uh, now we'll so what we learned uh, or what we understood is uh, functions can be treated as variables they can be uh, passed to other functions and they can be returned as well right so somebody was asking on the chat uh, how does it know that this is going to return a function right so that's the that's the crux of it uh, the return type the data type of this argument uh, of this variable need not be defined there are only two types uh, we'll use only const and var if if it's a const it means i can't redefine this i can't assign uh, this to anything else again okay i can't uh, reassign this if it's a var i'll be able to change the value of that okay so only during run time this variable will understand that this it, this has returned a function uh, so now let's start uh, taking a uh, now let's start refactoring we'll start applying the concepts whatever we kind of brush through so first what we'll do is uh, we we understood about pure functions right so the whole concept of functional programming is to have uh, is to use pure functions extensively so you want to code everything in based of pure functions but that's not really possible you need functions which are impure which which need to change the state of something which needs to send an email right so we'll try to uh, segregate out the pure functions as much as possible and we'll so that they can be reused everywhere okay so let's see uh, so first thing uh, let me start with uh, first refactoring all the for loops so a loop uh, is is like an iterative way and it always has side effects okay so let's start taking a look so you guys already had a code walk through of how this get i all items works so before that let me first execute if this is uh, working right so this is my test case uh, let me just run this i i have the application running in the background so we'll see the normal flow is working fine all that we're doing is uh we're picking items which are of the type juice and we're checking it out and we're um, ensuring that the order is successful okay that's what we're doing so now we'll start refactoring this um, so first i'll start uh, getting rid of all our for loops okay so our launch application and our login methods i think we don't need much refactoring here uh, login is also fine okay let's start looking at get all items so we have a for loop, uh, which is like finding each item and uh, performing some actions on every item. But at the end of it, what do we want? We are returning a uh, list of object. Okay. And what is that object? Uh, that's an object of uh, name and price, right? Something like this. I think I printed this. So this is the, this is what this function returns. So we want to achieve the same thing uh, without using this for loop. So let's say, uh, so let me take the whole thing. Uh, let I leave the find elements uh, because this is anyways in a sync operation. Let me start with uh, this loop, right? If you look at this, uh, these are all simple calculations. They'll always give you the same result based on your input. If you give the same input, you'll get the same output for these. So let's combine these. So we are uh, taking juices. So let's do, since we want to, since we want to return the same length as that as what we are giving as input, we'll use map, okay? 
so to map, we saw that we can pass one function. So let's say the first function I want to pass, uh, first you want to get the text. Okay. So let me do this. So let me write an arrow function that says element. And this is nothing but it's accessing each element of your map. And I'll do element dot get text. But uh, also there's a time check. I think there's like 30 minutes left. Um, let me uh, let me let me start uh, using our uh, already refactored code and maybe start explaining because uh, it might take a longer time to run it in debug mode and refactor on the fly. So let's look at this get all items. Uh, let's compare these two methods. Okay. Ideally, I should be, so the concept is, uh, ideally I should be doing uh, first to the map, I should be getting the text. After I get the text, what, what are we doing? We are splitting the values, okay? So say, uh, I'll do another thing and I'll do again, juices.map of, again, the next function is split, okay? Some type of split, right? Then uh, we are again getting another list. And we are saying uh, this time you, based on one kind of criteria, you uh, map it to an array of objects, okay? So let's say that function is something like map to array, okay? So if I write a function to split based on this, and if I write a function to, you know, uh, take out this map, and then if I apply to the, uh, to the same, I should apply, okay, first I will apply it on juices. Then values two I will apply to, to here and values two I will apply here, okay? So this way uh, I'll be able to get the final result. But if you see, I'm like uh, kind of using map three times, right? So one other thing which you can do in functional programming, right? Like uh, there, there are a lot of user-defined libraries, like uh, there are a lot of libraries uh, which JavaScript has to perform these higher order functions. Okay, like for this workshop, we'll use Ramza. So what I'll do is uh, we'll have this, uh, we'll just import Ramza and so that we can use the functions from them. So if you look at get all items, uh, one second, yeah. If you look at get all items, what I'll do is uh, I'll first get uh, all the text, okay? Using, uh, I'm using a promise all because I have to wait for each element to get the text, okay? And then uh, what I'll do is I'll use a pipe function. A pipe function is used to uh, is used to combine two functions. Okay, the output of this function will be given as the input to this function. So let me repeat that. What we saw was we have one second. I might be going a little fast. Um, let me take this. Right. So uh, first we are pass. First we are getting all the text. After that we want to. We are uh, using almost three times map. We are using map three times to perform two actions. Right. Uh, split and map to array. So instead I'll combine these two functions to one function uh, because the output of this is the input to the next guy. So for that reason I'll use a function called pipe. Okay. So in pipe, I can pass both the functions, whatever I want, and map relevant values. I will I will write my custom defined logic, right? Today it can be something, tomorrow it can be something else. So I'll write a logic for that. Okay, map relevant values, and I'll I'll maybe shorten the long text like uh, iterating through the array and everything because uh, I'll just reverse it and get the uh, values based on the index. I think that this logic was working for this, so we can use this. So I'll combine these two functions using pipe and this one function, okay, I will execute it on this map of juices. So uh, if I write it without Ramda, right, it'll just be this dot map of 
one function. So in other words, say this is uh, this is a list of all the text. Then we again got a list of text. Then we are getting a list of object. Okay. Now this and this we are combining. We are combining these two functions. Okay, using pipe, and we are passing instead of these two lines, we are just di directly going to do values dot map of the one function and the list. Okay, this way, uh, for the same length, right? Uh, I am getting the output. So uh, let me let us see how much we are. Uh, you know, one second. So let's look at this code again. So what we have done, we have uh, instead of this loop, we have converted it into, it into map. Okay. Uh, next, we look at the next uh, next map where next loop where it is used. So I think um, get juice type items again. What we are doing here is based on the type of uh, type of the uh, parameter, right? We want to return a certain function, and we just saw that functions can return functions easily. So how can we write this? So we'll write it in this order. So say I will have get juiced items. I'm taking the list, and I'm taking a function as an input. And I'll return f of chooses. Now, what I'll do, I will define this f. Of, I will define where this has to be executed. One second. Yeah. Uh, so I'm saying, uh, sorry, I'm just keeping two functions. Okay. And uh, I'm saying return that function, right? So I can pass this function as a parameter now. Now, what I've done in the test is get juice type items. I'm taking a list and I'm passing another function, okay? And in this function, what I've written, I've written is I've asked it to execute this function, okay? Take juices and take f. And return f of juices. That is, return the execution of this executed in this context itself. Okay. So what will happen if we look at this again? Get juice type items, uh, juice prices, comma return items which are juices. Okay. This function itself I will pass in the argument. This is one way of refactoring. Next, uh, add juices to cart. Uh, okay. So what were we doing earlier? Right. Add juices to cut. Let me introduce this. Yeah. So here, uh, what we are doing is we we have a sequence of operations, right? We have a sequence of steps based on the um, based on the juice name. Okay. Based on the name, I am first taking an element, and then I am finding a button which is below that element. And then I'm navigating to that element and then I'm clicking on the element. So I think uh, during during this, you would have seen uh, that all these uh, basket items are not very close to each other, right? One second. So if you see, I wanna click on this add to basket for multiple items. And I definitely have to scroll because there are a lot of uh, items below under like in the bottom also. So what we have done here is uh, based on this name, right? We are going. We have a sequence of operations, but all of these are async operations, right? They're all. Uh, we have to await for it. To a if you want to like to a map, right? You cannot send an async operation. Like you, you don't use it on async uh, functions, right? On promises. So how we'll uh, refactor this add to uh, add juices to cart, right? So I'll write a custom defined function, 
I'll write an async for for each. Okay, your for each literal, uh, your ideal implementation of for each, right? It will not have this await. It will just be uh, take the index, where uh, loop around until the length of it, index plus plus, and it will return the callback function. But now what we're doing, we're adding an await here. So, so if you use an async, uh, if you write a custom defined function like this, then you can uh, then you can pass it to this uh, for each. So the juice names, what I'll do, I'll pass it, uh, I'll use an async for each, I'll put the juice names and I'll put the entire function. I mean, I'll put the entire logic, okay, where uh, based on the name, it has to get text and then it has to uh, click on add to basket. It has to scroll to that basket and then it has to click. Uh, so this is an impure function, but still we will try to, you know, get rid of all the loops. Uh, so for that purpose, we'll refactor async operations also this way for, for each loops. Okay. Next, let's look at what's next. Um, if we look at our test case. We did this. We did uh, add juices to cart. Navigate to cart, I think there's not much refactoring here. Uh, check out cart also, I think uh, there's not much refactoring here as well. Select address uh, and select delivery, I think they're single actions. We don't have to refactor them. Select cart and continue. There's no loop here as well. Uh, we have a certain set of calculations, right? We want to first calculate uh, the expected prices. So we calculate uh, the total price, right? So all these things are impure functions, right? I mean, pure functions. All your calculations are always pure functions. You give uh, addition one, two, you will always get three. So no matter who calls this, based on the type of the argument, this will always return you the right values. So let's see how we've written this here. So what we, okay, uh, first we'll look at how we are doing it here. We have items uh, and we're iterating through each item, getting the price of it, accumulate it, get, getting the total, and then we are returning the price, right? And uh, similarly, we're getting the delivery charges because I think the total price is uh, item charges plus delivery charges plus the card price. Uh, so even for delivery charges, based on the type of delivery, we're returning some value. So how we can uh, refactor this, right? We'll refactor this because uh, we're using again loops to iterate through all of this. So let's look at that here. So get expected total price. So first expected item total, same thing. Whatever we learned, right, reduce. So you give it, you give it an array, you will you will get back an object, right? You'll get back a single value as the return item. So you need to pass an accumulator and the initial value, your list and your accumulator, okay? So I'm just writing items.reduce of accumulator comma item where accumulator is equal to parse float of item plus price. And this is my initial value, zero. So the same concept as what Samina explained to calculate the total price. So we'll use the same thing and this reduce to uh, something this simple, right? You don't have to iterate through the whole thing. Next, uh, the delivery charges, uh, you can use Ramda functions. Uh, you have like uh, Ramda dot condition where uh, it'll give you the respective value based on a uh, based on the te text uh, based on what if you if you pass on standard delivery it would return you this value okay this is similar to a switch case but why we are using lambda functions is uh, if you look at the documentation right they would also mention the same thing they uh, the lambda functions are curried functions and also uh, they'll uh, try to keep the data immutable, okay? They'll always, uh, what do you say? You'll, you'll not, so it's very safe to use Ramda functions when you're using a functional programmer. Then 
uh, even for bone, I think bonus points is quite refactored. It's a simple calculation, so it does the same thing. Uh, next, uh, let's uh, let's look at what we have more in the text case. I think we have only so much, right? So uh, let's go back to our slide. Uh, is this much amount of refactoring enough? So all that we have done right now is get rid of for loops. Uh, but all our other elements, all our other, uh, all other methods and actions remain the same. Now, what? Why are we saying apply functional programming? How to apply this to this test automation? We have not yet started that concept. So, if you look at our test case, right, uh, it is completely following only the user journey. That is a must. You have to follow the user journey. You have to first uh, perform login, then you have to perform cart operation, right? But uh, how to how to you know uh, reduce the amount of uh, coding co lines and also how to keep maximum pure functions, right? And how do you design a framework for uh, when you're using such concepts? No, so let's look at that. Let's look. Let's go back to our uh, presentation. So. Uh, Whatever I have right now, right? Whatever methods I have, I think everyone's familiar with them. So now I'll try to segregate them into uh, three layers, which makes sense to my program, to my test case, right? So I I'll have a business layer, and then I'll have a um, I'll have current operations, and then I'll have item operations, and I'll have uh, array built-ins. So what I'm saying is, I will try to keep all the business logic at the business layer. Okay, I'll try to keep all the all the count operations at this layer, item operations at the item operations layer, and array built-ins here. Now, what I want to achieve is um, I want to have uh, the business layer functions as pure functions, so that I can reuse them maximum. Also, I can add them uh, in, at any point, and I want the business layer to be the top layer. So, what that means is uh, this business layer should only be uh, affected by the card operations, right? And my card operations should only call methods from item operations. And all of them can call diary built-ins because this is, uh, this is like required for everyone. All the functions can call these. Any number of uh, calls to these functions would not be harmful. But too many, uh, but if you're passing the same data, uh, let me annotate, sorry. So if you're passing the same data throughout, right? So add juices to cart uh, and again, get all. So get all items will be sending to the cart. And again, this would, uh, the juices would be sent to calculate the total price, again, to calculate the delivery speed. So the same kind of parameters will be um, sent again and again to different methods. And also uh, I have to have, uh, I'm, and also there's another other advantage which we will cover so let's let's move forward yeah uh, and i'll also have some methods which don't fall into any layer that is also fine you may not be able to segregate them exactly as a cut operation or as a business layer right then uh, we look at what are the practices we need to follow to make it a very good functional programming style in your test automation framework also, okay? So first, you always separate out the business rules as functions. So it's easy to use in your uh, test case. So if your test case is saying test that item total has to be the sum of all the uh, items added, that thing has to be a separate function. If your business rule says for so many for so much of your cart item, you receive so much bonus points. That is also a function. Always separate all such things out as functions so that when you have uh, changes in the requirement, right, you can easily update them. Okay. Next, uh, use the call graph. So uh, what happened is, um, one sec. So if you use a call graph, you'll be able to identify if you're passing the same kind of data again and again to functions. We often tend to do that in a lot of, um, in Selenium code, especially like when we are automating web pages, we want to carry the data from the first flow till the end. And we end up passing that, uh, we end up passing that user journey completely. 
from the beginning when he selects the juices i keep sending it until my last step okay which is to uh, calculate the uh, total so it's fine to send we of course needed to you know calculate uh, the total but uh, reduce the number of uh, times you're sending it okay then always extract calculations from actions as much as possible we won't be able to uh, do anything to click text all of this they are synchronous operations they have to ha happen one after the other but anything which you want to perform on that text after get text or uh, anything which any type of calculation which you want to perform you separate it out you keep it in a different module or uh, you keep it out as different functions so that you can pass that function in any of your test cases or wherever it's required okay then keep data immutable uh, this is very important because uh, say so if i'm using juices throughout my application right i need to ensure that i'm not changing it if one of the function in between changes my juices uh, value rate that then my my test case actually fails you'll never be able to your test case might be passing but it's actually not uh, finding what it's supposed to do it's not testing what it's supposed to do so always try so what what we recommend is what uh, fp recommends is you copy the data when you get it inside the method and you make a copy and say you send it back okay you always uh, take a copy of uh, when you get it in and also when you send it out and avoid implicit input and output okay so avoid calling a function as uh, five add of five plus four or add of six plus five always try to i, I mean avoid uh, always pass it as argument don't pass don't keep passing it as uh, explicit arguments then uh, refactor all your uh, methods to generic names okay this is important when uh, say your your juice portal will now be used by someone someone else like your uh, business says they want to sell some other items right for such cases always ensure that since we are anyways modularizing we are anyways separating out the calculations as much as possible keep generic names for them so that they can be reused okay we'll see how uh, we are achieving all of this and duplicate code so in uh, web automation i think we always do uh, iteration right we always say get a list of elements uh, do so and so and so again we do get a list of elements do so and so and so so such type of uh, duplicate code is code smell always try to avoid this this is where we will we'll have bugs in our automation framework okay so with this in mind let's try to refactor um so let me just stash this changes one second so uh, this is our first refactored method where we have removed all the loops okay next what do we what are we seeing uh, which is you know a big major issue here is we are passing driver to every single function okay we are passing driver to every single function so to avoid this uh, what we can do is we can pass it to one function and that function first let's uh, segregate out the uh, functions so we've already identified what are cart operations what are item operations right so i'll i'll put them in different modules okay i'll have a business layer then i'll have cart operations layer then i'll have item operations and user operations so in the business layer i'll keep only my business rules okay which is expected delivery charges and expected bonus points we went through the code for this already then in cart operations we'll have cart actions and cart calculations okay we'll separate out the cart operations also as two different layers which is calculations and actions and uh, if you look at it uh, actions right what are we calling actions something which is impure so in all these uh, you know uh, click get text we uh, click navigate we can't help it it has to happen one after the other so if you see our action our calculation uh, our actions will need the driver it'll always need the web driver because they're doing actions on the uh, browser 
whereas our calculations will never require the driver we're not doing any impure activity here so these methods can be active, okay uh, then you also separate out the item functions mm, actions and calculations so item actions and item calculations now after i've put the method in their respective modules right now i would i would ideally just export this function okay and i would call this function in my uh, test case i would just uh, I, I would import the function so how okay uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, javascript right so let's look at the cart actions uh, module so here what i'm doing is i'm returning i'm having one constant uh, cart action of methods and i'm exporting that whatever you export okay you'll be able to import in your other module so all that i've done in the test case is i've imported that okay card action methods i've imported i will tell you how i've written this right so my card actions um, earlier what was happening i was sending driver to every single function whichever had a card operation because they were all operations on the browser so what i'll do i've uh, put all of them together in one file right i've put them i'll i've put all these uh, functions in this and i'll write a parent function okay my parent function is nothing but uh, card action methods uh, you know that you can store the function in a variable so this variable what it holds is it's a function which returns a couple of functions okay this is your higher order concept we have a function let me uh, take you through that again we have a function okay and inside this we have multiple other functions but they will be executed only when they are called okay always keep that in mind you can keep writing function inside function inside function but they will be executed only when they are called so right now i'm not calling any of them i've just defined all these functions inside the parent function and uh, i'm passing the driver at the parent function level so to each of my method i don't need to pass driver up. each of the method only needs that particular parameter okay and driver is globally available to all the functions within this function okay and in return statement i'm writing return all these okay just like you would return constants or you would return an int or a uh, string you just return all of this that means once uh, so let's see how this works right so now i'll say can't actions equal to await can't action methods of driver so what i've done i have imported the cart action methods from cart actions and i am saying uh, cart actions equal to await cart action methods of driver this is in a sync operation so i am passing driver and this thing will uh, so now so now my cart actions will hold a function with the driver uh, 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 with the driver as the parameter okay and each function in the cart actions i can call it as cart actions dot selected items any function i will call it and when i call this is when it is getting executed only when i am calling when only when i am saying cart actions dot select items and checkout this function will get executed let's just look at it one last time i have cart action method okay this is the parent function i am passing driver as a parameter so the driver parameter is available to all the functions which are written with uh, which are written within this and this function returns the functions which i want to access from my test class or any other class okay uh, sorry test module so from this module i will call function dot this function that time it will execute this until that it will not execute that function okay so when you combine uh, functions like this so now what happened i don't have to pass driver to all of the uh, methods which are for from cart actions so i'll just say cart actions dot select items and checkout i'll say user actions dot select uh, address similar to cart actions uh, i have written for uh, user actions and item actions okay and if you're uh, because in user actions again my common is driver to all my action classes uh, to all my action action methods 
the common element is driver okay and to all the um, calculations a data is uh, similar right for all your cart calculations you need uh, the list of cart items so uh, ideally all of these uh, ex calculate expected total of this calculate expected total of brie was always taking my cart items again so here when i'm passing this cart items what i will do is uh, i'll i will say cart items too and i'll say here i'll say const cart items equal to cart items two dot slice okay so what is a slice a slice returns a copy of this array okay so instead of performing all the actions on the same array you take a copy of it and then you work on it okay this is uh this way you will achieve uh immutability this is very important so that there's nothing wrong with your program you will find very less bugs if you follow data immutability and pure functions extensively now let me go back Uh, let me go back to the test case. We did this for actions and we did this for calculations. And uh, if you look at rules, right, I kept it as it is. I don't have anything common to send to these functions and all. So keep them as functions itself and export them uh, so that and import it wherever it is necessary. Okay. And uh, rest of the things. And also, one more thing which you can do is you can rename your functions. So if you look at, uh, let's take some function which we have taken. Okay, all these are constants. Okay, fine. Then also, uh, so from this uh, cart actions, right, we are exporting uh, cart action methods. Now, say I want to use a different name for this, right? Here I'm saying cart action methods because I have imported it. Now I will say uh, import cart action methods as cart actions okay this means i've now if you see uh this 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 doesn't have a reference so i've renamed this method here so in your test case what i what this helps you is this helps you in uh writing your user defined names you can uh however it makes sense to you right this would be a juice card for you for this test okay so this would be juice card actions this way, your test case will also be uh, quite readable. Okay, let's go back to the PPT. Uh, now the client says uh, they've decided, they've changed the bonus point logic. They've decided to give it only for uh, card price, which is above 1000. So for this, what we'll do, since we um, have the bonus points, you know, as a separate business rule, for any business changes, we'll be able to change only here and it will not affect our test case. Your test cases will have minimum changes. Okay. Uh, then let's go to the concept of currying. Yeah. Samina. Yeah. So uh, currying is nothing but uh, let's say you have a uh, function which takes multiple parameters. So we have, we wanted to, let's say that function can use uh, all the parameters or we other functions which will use only the few parameters from it. Right. So it will be like uh, the currying concept is like you wanted to make sure the transformation of the multiple argumented uh, function instead of using multiple things return a function which will make use of other arguments let's say your parent uh, function is using three arguments the uh, the return function will make use of uh, one fun one argument among three but you can call the parent argument with the one and in turn the second function will call the third function which will make use of the third argument so the concept is called currying so how it is helpful like uh, you in the currying you it is not a language uh, is giving you a support right it is a user defined how you define your functions when you are calling from the other methods and all how you can eradicate the repeated arguments passing from one function to other function to do that uh, the currying is a one which will help you with that so in this case uh, let's say you uh, you the rules to apply for the currying is like you have the more generic functions on the top and what data is specific let's say i want to say hi to the uh, array of elements okay array of names so it should be like uh, the first one should be generic message like, let's say i want to greet uh, each person so the uh, here generic is a message let's say hi 
high is a generic and i'm going to make this more specific to the name so the name should be at the end and the generic method should be on the top so this is how we'll achieve the uh, removing of the repeated arguments to pass from one uh, one function to the other functions instead you break it down you have a function on top which is having a single parameter and that return a function which will take the other second parameter and in turn return the other functions whatever functions you have like that we can uh, make use of uh, uh, removing the repeated arguments yeah okay so um let's let's just look at the concept of currying uh, with an example right Uh, so that you know we're able to understand if it is used in the framework like overshooting the time so it's just fair uh Samuel do you want to do this or shall I sure, just sure, sure, sure I can I can do it I can share my screen yeah yeah uh you're able to see my screen okay. yes so uh, let's say if you want to have a function which uh, takes uh, three arguments, right? Usually we will be having something of this sort. Uh, let's say two of uh, a comma b comma c. So this is the function which is using making use of uh, three arguments, and instead of this, it will be returning a plus b plus c. So So uh, this is a non-curried function. If you want to curry this function, the uh, logic, the definition by definition, it says like uh, we wanted to have a function which make uh, use of a single argument, and uh, it Samina will. And Samina, sorry to interrupt you. We are slightly over time. So how much more time would you require? Yeah, just this one concept, and I think we'll wind okay. it up in five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Say this is a function which is taking a, a single argument, and in turn, it will return a one more function which takes the other argument, which is nothing but the other argument. And then you have uh, one more function which uh, which will take the third argument. So this is how you can achieve, like uh, how you can remove the argument. Let's say this a nothing to do with the b, right? So the, the dependency of the arguments we can remove using the currying function. So this is how you can do it with your uh, currying concept. So I think we are overshooting one or another. Just, uh, just show up in the code, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, so here, we don't really have a use case where we can demonstrate currying with this current test case. But what we kind of did is our maximum best possibility for the sake of this workshop, right? To explain, we try to uh, write one function uh, using the currying concept. But here uh, we're using, uh, so this is function A, which returns function B, which in turn returns function C. So to call function A, right, to call filtering, I need only, uh, I, I, I pass the parameters like this, just notice this. I pass the parameters one after the other. Uh, and all your user-defined libraries, right, they would use the currying concept. Uh, this is a huge concept. I think we're overshooting time. Uh, let me just go back to our slide. Um, so after, so I think now we've uh, completed the functional programming, like we've segregated it into different layers. Now, what is the major benefit, right? Your, uh, everything is in terms of functions. So you can easily change them. Okay, like uh, when whenever your uh, business expands, right, all your operations can easily handle that. Okay, and uh, what is it more suitable for? If your uh, test automation framework needs to test a system which is like uh, very data heavy, you have a lot of uh, changing data like this Jusha portal, say it is Mintra or something like that. For such data heavy systems, you can use this. And also for concurrent systems. So parallel execution, right? In for things which are a promises, you have to wait explicitly. But for all the calculations, these can happen. These are all, if you see, they are async functions. They can all happen in parallel. So this way, you speed up the process a bit. Okay. 
then uh, there are a lot of other fp languages uh, javascript is a language which allows uh, even the non functional way of programming even the object oriented way but there are pure functional languages like uh, haskell and clojure which you can explore and it will you know uh, it will be very interesting to work on that uh, one of the some disadvantages right uh, we don't use loop iteration so writing a recursion for uh, small pieces might be like a little time consuming and complex and data immutability affects performance so what we did is uh, we always copied made a copy of an array and then we performed act actions on it right so that would uh, hit a, take a hit on the performance but if it's not taking a hit you can leave it if it takes it takes a hit then you can think of refactoring that but it would give you a bug free code right so um then uh, some of the references uh, this Eric Norman, Norman's uh, Groking Simplicity and other YouTube videos and a uh, lot of blogs on functional programming. Uh, we find it majorly useful to automate a very dynamic, uh, dynamically changing website and things like that. Please do check it out. Um, thank you. That's, uh, that's it for the workshop. Thanks for attending. <laughs>